It was announced a couple of days ago that Neil Waters has found, apparently, or taken a photograph of a family of thylacine. You what know. would you do if you found a live one? I'd film it, and then I'd take it to the museum and say, well, now you have to do something. Why, do, why does it take privateers like me, using my own money, I've given away my career, to come back down here to actually try and prove this? We'll watch this play out uh, with some interest. Thanks for coming in. There are a lot of what-ifs. There are a lot of animals in Australia that were written off. Night parrot, pygmy blue tongue lizard, Gilbert's potteroo, mountain pygmy possum. Now they're all extinct until someone finds them. We've had a sighting not too far from here. So we've grabbed ourselves a fresh roadkill from last night, a little paddy melon. And then we've dragged that for a reasonable distance to create a scent trail. And basically set up a camera in the area, not exactly on the spot because it's on a main road and you don't want to lose your gear. I'm hopeful that whatever animal they saw is still in the area and the scent trail will hopefully lure in that beastie over the next few months and we might get a nice clear shot. This is Tassie Tiger Lodge. This is my home. It's my veggie garden. This is Thyla Central. So this is where I do a lot of my reading and researching online and things like that. Also, I keep some of my evidence in here. So these are what I believe to be thylacine prints. These two here, rather large. These are local, these are from Tassie, Northeast Tassie. I also keep my scat collection in here, the ones that I haven't been able to get off and get tested because I, they're probably just too old, but they may be good for a hair sample. So I keep them frozen anyway, just to protect whatever DNA is in there. But we keep them in the freezer here so the DNA is preserved for as long as possible. I do keep a few little knickknacks in here as well. This one here I really like. This is one of my favorite bits of artwork. I really enjoy that, I like it. This is from a friend in Adelaide called Jim Leosti. This is by a lady by the name of Kath Alcock. She's a 95 year old thylacine hunter from South Australia. And it's actually on the back. She's written on it for me. My name's Neil Waters and um, I'm currently the president of the Thylacine Awareness Group of Australia. Oh, Mark's out in the Mallee. We are at a secret location looking for thylacines. When I set up the Thylacine Awareness Group of Australia, I wanted it to be a meeting place for people to share their stories of the thylacine without fear of ridicule. A lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them rang up the museum, rang up the zoo, rang up national parks and got laughed at. So, you know, uh, the, the Thylacine Awareness Group was originally started so that people could bring their stories forward and share their information. And that's proved to be really successful. There's just information coming in constantly. Hey, I've just noticed on the um, committee group there that you uh, had a bit of an encounter the other day with Susan. What happened? Yeah, look, it was, it was really amazing, actually. I was sort of walking to yep. the side of where I heard um, what I kind of yes. describe as a, a type of cough bark. So it was like the typical... Ah! Ah! Yep, yep. Excellent. Absolutely. Welcome to yep. my nightmare. You've just been barked at by a tiger. Oh. 
<laughs> Neither is mine, let me tell you. So the thylacine is a really unusual animal in the sense that it looks like a dog, it kind of runs like a horse and behaves like a cat. Sadly, we deliberately persecuted this animal because we were scared that it might be like a wolf. Once that bounty was put in place by the government, that crippled the population. But thankfully, the sightings continued and continued and continued and continued to this day. So there's always that little ray of hope that they're still there. I'll lose a hat. I need a hat. How are you? How are you, mate? You found it all right? Yeah, all good. It's a bit of a trek in here. Follow my nose, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge trek. Here's to the tiger. Absolutely, mate. Revere. So, what's new? Well, Apparently, you got some new footage. Got some new footage. Oh, that's nice. You got any poo? I have. Oh. A box here somewhere for you. <laughs> I didn't bring any poo because you told me all my last poos were devils. I got some prints though. They're few and far between, so you <laughs> gotta know what you're looking for. So I've spent, you know, three and a half, four years creating what we've created with Togoa and the group and I've been working hard to get that information feed that I've created all set up. I noticed in that one photo I've got, he's got his mouth wide open and he'd be harking. <sighs> You reckon that's a warning noise? Yeah, that yeah, it is. <coughs> no, no, this is a... <coughs> oh, right. Now, I just want to spend as much time as I can out in the bush, really intensely focusing on my sightings information, hopefully get that clearly defined, you know, unambiguous footage that um, settles the story once and for all. My last job was a very good job. But I resigned from that role in June last year, just to commit the next two years to, you know, really put in a good effort and try and prove that it's here still. I hope someone hasn't come and cut the tree down to tape my fucking cameras. Bingo! The cameras have been out now, most of them, about five or six months now. Hopefully we get some interesting footage. At the very least we'll get devils and probably quolls, and uh, if we get lucky and get old Stripey on there, then um, bingo. Being on this search, there is a lot of downtime where I am on my own, primarily, probably 95% of the time I'm on my own in Tasmania. That's why I have a dog, because I've got a companion there. Um, she's extra set of eyes and ears when I'm out in the bush. Um, and she's also a good companion and she's a great little guard dog. Jess! You're a turkey. Look at you. You had enough? You gonna jump in the car now? Come on. We gotta go get some more cameras. Being out there as often as I can be, um, gives me the opportunity to just have a lot of downtime to think about my life and where it's gone over the years. The grief that I've gone through and the hardships that I've gone through. Well, my um, parenthood years have been rocked a bit, I suppose, in the, in the early part when my first born daughter passed away in 2009. 
messed up edges. Julia was 17 when she passed away in a car accident with her boyfriend, Joe. It was on Valentine's Day, 2009. Um, Joe was driving, he was speeding, went over a big steep hill, got the car airborne, lost control, hit a tree, cast burst into flames. So they were incinerated in the wreck. So that was pretty horrific. Grieving is a very personal thing. Some people can't grieve at all and they become ruined by it and they um, kind of stagnate. I didn't want to stagnate. I wanted to make sure that I didn't sit there and just be lost from grief. Come on, Jess. So I decided I'd go over and throw caution to the wind and throw everything I've got at trying to prove this once and for all. But I feel Julie's absence every day. I always grieve my daughter. I'm constantly, you know, reminded of the fact that she's not here. Chasing this animal around, animal around all over Tasmania is um, releasing that monkey, I suppose, off my back of grief and, and just doing what makes me happy. And, and, and here we are now, you know, 12 years later nearly, 13 years later, whatever it is. So. Welcome to my house um, that my great grandfather built. I had built for him in 1906 um, and it's still standing. So, not bad for over a century. Come for a stroll. Sorry about the clutter in the hallway here, but here's all my wine making and whiskey making equipment, stills and condensers and filters. My bedroom, that's my um, camping room. You won't want to go in there, there's too much crap. And into my tiger room. Over here we have cameras, down there we've got cameras, there we've got cameras. Oh, over here's look, someone spent a whole lot of time making that out of Marmite and giving to me. Over in the corner here is scats and footprints and bones and you name it. Different scats I've taken over the years and I usually just ride on them where it's come from. Nice big one. Oh, that's a bit of sand. Another one, what's this one say? Oh, ham and pickles. <laughs> I've bought sandwiches when I've been going out the bush and I've used that bag to collect the scat. Sometimes your brother goes, you're mad, waste too much money. I reckon I've spent half a million dollars. <laughs> um, other family members are fairly supportive. That's Grace. Grace got hit with a juvenile arthritis. She's in full remittance now, but she couldn't walk. They thought she had leukaemia. Hey. And there's Ellie Mae when she was a little baby. Yeah, no, she's been with me plenty of times. So I think she's seen three already. She loves the bush. And like I said, on the wall beside us, drawings from when they were little kids about camping in the bush with Dad, tracking tigers. But as they become teenagers and they don't want to get ridiculed, they kind of, yeah. This is my daughter Ellie Mae collecting things. Bird nests after bird nest, after bird nest. And she'd get little shells off the beach and put them in there as eggs. Ah, oh, yeah, Rachel and Ellie May and myself in happier times. My partner at the time was there, yeah, got sick of it. So she moved and took the kids with her. Um, well, I suppose if you're not home, you spend all your time in the bush um, and not home looking after your family and they're wanting to buy new stuff and you're just buying more cameras and more batteries and instead of buying them things, they expect them to move. So, but anyway, it's been worth it. I sometimes used to say to myself, I oh, wish I'd never seen one. What would I be doing now? Like, just, I would have had more money, half a million dollars in the bank probably. But it's just the fun of it. And it's thrill. I still put hairs up on the back of my neck when I come across one. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, there's plenty of people out there married and there's not many people out there hunting tigers. And it, if it costs you marriage, well, it costs you marriage. Double Sunday. <laughs>
boat down here on the ocean. We will stay. 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 Hello. Hello, Matthew. My name is Neil Waters. A friend of yours put me on to you in regards to a thylacine sighting. You happy to chat to me on the phone, mate? No uh, problem. Oh. That, that's all right, mate. No problem at all. Gavin, how are you? A fella by the name of Chris gave me your number and said that you and your wife might be interested in having a chat to me about the old striped ones. Oh, I just got a lot of information that I'd like to pass on about it, but um, we always said that if, if we started mentioning things like that around the place, to be every clown in the place to be up here with his dogs looking around. That, that's all right, mate. No problem at all. couple of years ago I sort of said right well I'll give myself a couple of years in Tassie and see what happens. We're into that second year now that's begun so the time is ticking away but I don't really see a need to put a time limit on it. If I can still walk those mountains and carry that pack and walk the dog and light a fire and lie on the ground and I'm not financially destitute. I will probably still be doing this in 10 years time if I haven't proved it in that time. Bingo, <laughs> we're in. You're not coming back out. <laughs> <laughs> right, now plate. Remember him? Yes. <laughs> How long ago was that? 2009? Yeah. I think Sue gave us that, didn't she? So I need that, that, that. Those two, look for good luck. Yep. You never know, he might bring us good luck. And the first aid kit. Uh, one thing that's happening uh, in the next couple of days is that my daughter Shana's actually coming over to spend some time out in the bush with me. We haven't been able to spend a terrible lot of time together over the last couple of years for work and, you know, what I'm doing and she's busy as well. Yep. We have a lot to talk about, so it'd be good to get her out here and um, enjoy the show. I'm really glad you're here for this. This is so cool for you to be a part of this, you know. Yeah, I know you were upset when I moved down here, but I just had to get out of Adelaide. I just couldn't handle it. As a kid, like, you know, it was like, why is dad running away, you know, and leaving me kind of thing. But as an adult, I look back and don't hold anything against you. You know, you did what you needed to do. You know, you're chasing your dream and your passion. You know, there's nothing that I could ever do to change anything that happened with Julia. So I feel um, very blessed, actually, yeah. to, um, to be able to just sit here with you now and just have a drink and be totally relaxed. Do you think you might move down here one day? I hope so. So, the last 10 days, I've probably been acting a bit weird to everybody in the group and online. And uh, that's because um, when I was checking the SD cards, I found some photos that were pretty damn good. I know what they are. The first image is the mum. We know the second image is the baby because it's so tiny. And the third image is the dad. Congratulations, everyone. We've done it. Cheers. How's the YouTube looking? Oh, mate, over 300,000 views in 48 hours. Wow, that's awesome. Hey Neil, Nine News here. Thanks for your time on the phone earlier. Can I ask where in Tasmania you live? Nathan. Yeah, how are you going? Uh -huh. Are you 100% confident in this? Absolutely. As far as I'm concerned, mate, that baby is on the money. Wow. Friend of the show. It's Neil Waters! Neil Welcome. <laughs>
This has been news all around Australia. I guess, what do you say to those people that are doubters? Knock yourself out. The thylacine is out there, guys. <laughs> well, can you give us any sense as to where the, the animal was found, Neil? Yeah, in Tasmania, mate. <laughs> That's about as much detail. Okay, here we go. It was announced a couple of days ago that Neil Waters has found, apparently, or taken a photograph of a family of thylacine. The photo you're about to show me that I haven't seen yet is yes. sitting on your laptop. Correct. Okay, so what am I looking at? Well, I believe you're looking at a juvenile thylacine for a number of reasons. The colour of the animal is a fawn colour. It's got stripes. It's got a straight tail that looks like a continuation of its spine, and its back is dead straight while it's down on all fours. Neil, the, uh, the photograph is interesting. We'll watch this play out uh, with some interest, as I have been for many, many years now. Neil, it's good to meet you finally. Thanks for coming in. Some of the comments are quite funny, actually. This wait has been like a pregnancy. The last few days seemed like years, but in the end, the reward is worth it. Can't wait for tomorrow. Yeah. How are you, mate? All right? Going all right? Yeah, good, mate. How are you? Excellent. I think there's a few people sitting up late tonight waiting to see it. <laughs> you persisted because I think you've uh, you really have done it there mate it's amazing look at the end of the day mate this this little baby represents the one thing that we all want to believe and that is that it's breeding and it's out there ah, it's fantastic so what's the time there in Tassie mate 11.42 mate you got like 20 minutes and you should be up I gotta, you click one button and it's done hit publish it's like launching the nukes <laughs> Don't hit the red button. Bro, come on, those look nothing like a thylacine. Way too fat and short-legged, and the stripes, which are just shadows from the foliage, vanish on the adults. Funny how that's just not mentioned. Please look over your photos with a harder eye and stop drinking so much. It just defies logic. Dorset Big Cats, with respect, it seems you are so desperate evidence it is clouding your judgement and as a result are reading far too much into these highly ambiguous images. <laughs> I admire Neil's tenacity, but he has allowed his ambition to colour his vision. These photos are not inconclusive. They are just not photos of thylacines. Everybody knows more than everybody. That's awesome. I mean, with this sort of terrible photo, it could be my mum. Love the work you do. Would be amazing if these were still out there, and this has made me believe that they really might be. Jamie, how are you, mate? Oh, there. <laughs> Check out the leg muscles on that blooming first adult one you sent. Yeah, wow. I know, mate. She's long is, too. But you can see the, um, the backward pouch. Yeah, I know. How long is she, though? Look at the length of her. Yeah, I know. I just look, I'm looking at them and I'm going, there. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you reckon, mate? Done all right? Hundred percent. How many years experience you got out bushing and tracking and stuff again? Just remind me. <laughs> I 
40. <laughs> I'm 42 years old, and I'm telling you, that is 100%. <laughs> what did you think of the face of the... Ba I'm, I've got shit service here, buddy. I'm right up by the fire heap at the top of the hill. Uh, all good, mate. Now I can hear you again. Yeah. But no, that's what I can see in them photos. I've only looked at the first three photos. Yep. <laughs> and I'm telling you, that's 100% what I saw that night. Like, I don't care what anyone says. That is 100%. Who's the dip of shit that Blarman says it's Paddy Mellon anyway? Well, no disrespect to that fella, but that's Nick Mooney from the museum. I just don't know how people can say, oh, that's a Paddy Mellon. They obviously have never, ever been in the bush. Yeah, ever. I know. Have a look at any patty mill and they've got a fat bum and they go to a skinny head. But, you know, I'm not an idiot. I don't have my head in the sand completely, unlike, you know, the, the establishment that clearly does have its head in the sand and doesn't want to investigate all of this sightings phenomena. Science has been sitting on their hands for a very long time ignoring this issue and I'm really happy to stimulate some debate and get them off their hands and actually have a look at it. And if it means that I get pulled to bits by the media and the science community for being a big mouth that makes all this noise and bold statements, who gives a shit? I actually got them off their ass and interested in the topic. So that's my job done. <laughs>